Dear students, welcome to the session on Lagrange's multiplier method. In this session, we are going to see some basic ideas on Lagrange's multiplier methods and procedure and few problems. Let us go into the session. Before going to the session, those who don't watch the maxima minima basics part 1, part 2 and part 3 videos, kindly click the playlist, watch the videos and come back to this video. Constrain maxima minima. In many practical problems on maxima minima, we have found the extreme values of a function of two or more variables which are not dependent but they are connected by some relation. For example, you can see suppose we have x square plus y square plus z square equal to 1. I want to find the maximum value of this equation subject to the condition x plus 2y plus 3z equal to 4. There is one method to solve this problem like we take the equation 2 and I can write 3z is equal to 4 minus x minus 2y. So now I can substitute this. I will substitute z as 1 by 3, 4 minus x minus 2y in this equation 1. Now it is converted into a 2 variable that is function of x, y where x and y are independent. Now I can solve by simply maxima minima and I can find the maximum minimum value. This is one method. But what is the problem? Suppose the relation between these variables are so complicated. In such cases, maxima minima will not be sufficient. Finding z in terms of x and y will be also very difficult task or sometimes it might be impossible. In such cases, we are going to use the versatile Lagrange's multiplier method in which the introduction of a multiplier enables us to solve the constrained extremal problems without solving the constrained equation for one variable in terms of others. So, let us see the procedure for Lagrange's multiplier method. Step 1, we are going to write the objective. First of all, we have to identify f. What I want to find in the question, I will always take it as f and then additional to the f there will be a constraint given to us there will be equation given to us i'll take that equation as g of x comma y comma z equal to zero so simple to find is going to be f and given data is going to be g now we are going to construct an auxiliary equation f is equal to f plus lambda g where f is the function which I have to find and g is the given constraint and what is this lambda where this lambda is an undetermined parameter which is independent of x, y, z and it is called as Lagrange's multiplier. Step 2 as visual as like maxima minima we are going to find the stationary points. So now we know capital F. This is my new function F plus lambda g. For this I want to find the stationary points. So since it is three variables I can say fx0, fy0, fz0 and lambda is also a parameter uh, which is not depending on x, y, z. So I can find f lambda 0. This f lambda equal to 0 is nothing but here g of x comma y comma z equal to 0. That is given in the question as a constraint. So we don't bother about this. Our concentration is on fx0, fy0 and fz0 provided that the f is a capital F where f is small f plus lambda g. Now, once we differentiate, I will get the answer like small fx plus lambda into small gx0 and similarly for fy I can find like this and also for fz. As I said, when you differentiate f partially with respect to lambda, you will be getting the given equation g. Now, I want to find the stationary points. For this, I am going to write like fx by gx is equal to minus lambda from this. Similarly, I can write the relation like this. So, from this, I am going to find my stationary point and this is going to be the given equation. Actually, this is not step 3. It is a continuation of step 2. From this equations, I am going to solve and find the x, y, z. So, I am going to take it as step 3 for my convenience. I will solve this equations to find x, y, z. Once this x, y, z is found, that is going to be the stationary points. And once we found 
this x y z if i substitute in my function f of x comma y comma z i will be finding the min max and in the case of maxima minima we know that a greater than 0 ac minus b square greater than 0 will give the min value and a less than 0 ac minus b square greater than 0 will give the max value but here in this case we cannot find whether it is a minimum value or maximum value you have to note that this method does not specify whether the extremal value is minimum or the extremal value is maximum so it is usually desired from the physical and geometrical consideration of the problem let us consider an application problem a rectangular box open at its stops it has value 32 we don't want to worry about the units find the dimensions of the box which requires least amount of material for its construction so i want to construct a rectangular box which is open at the top whose volume is 32 i want to find the dimensions of the rectangular box which is open at the top such that it should minimize the amount of the material used that is my step 1 I want to make a rectangular box which is open at the top such that I want to find length breadth and height of the rectangular box should be minimum so that I'll be getting the minimum surface area which should possess the volume of 32 cc so this is the constraint given to us I don't bother about length or breadth or height I'm assuming x y and z represents the dimensions of the box so let us see the rectangular box it has how many sides it has six sides front and back left and right top and bottom as my kid said it has six sides so according to our question it is said that it is opened at top so i am going to consider a rectangular box which has five sides right left front back and the bottom So now see this rectangular box. I'm just taking the bottom alone. The area of this rectangle is x y. So bottom and top both are with areas x y. Right and left with areas x z. Front and back have the area y z. My question is given as a rectangular box open at the top. So I'm going to take my function as the total surface area. Which has five sides, so we don't have top. I'm going to write x y. Right and left two times x z. Top and bottom two times y z. This is going to be my total surface area formula. And diagrams are not needed for your exam point of view. I am just giving you for your understanding. So now, since the box is open at the top, the total surface area is f. That is x y plus two y z plus two z x or x z. And remember, students, it is always needs not to be like this. If you take f equal to two x y two y z plus z x, this is also correct. Or if you take two x y plus y z plus two z x, this is also correct because we assume that x y z are dimensions. It might be anything. So this is my f. And what next given to us? Given volume of the box is thirty two. So that means. Volume of the rectangular box is x, y, z because area of a rectangle whose length and breadth are x and y is x, y. When you go for volume, it is going to be x, y, z. So I will take this as equation two. So I want to find this, and this is the given information to us. Therefore, from the given information or the constraint, I can write the function g as x, y, z minus thirty two. How can I construct G? Take the equation, bring all the data to one side, make it zero. Now take the left hand side. This is my G. Therefore, the given constraint is x y z minus thirty two. Now we have to form the auxiliary equation by Lagrange multipliers method. We have to say capital F is equal to f plus lambda g. Now substitute your f and g in this equation. This is my capital F. Let us go into the step two. We are going to find the stationary points. The stationary points are capital F x zero, capital F y zero, capital F z zero. And we are not going to bother about F lambda. As I said, it is simply going to be g equal to zero. So I don't want to worry about it. Now write F. Yes, I am going to make a table. Which is convenient for me to find the equations. These are all my three stationary 
points. Now I will differentiate f partially with respect to x here. When I differentiate, I will be getting y. In this term, there is no x, it is 0. Here, 2 is z. So y plus 2 is z plus lambda into here xyz differentiation partially with respect to x is y z equal to 0. Similarly, when I go for fy, I will be getting x plus 2 is z plus lambda into x z equal to 0. And then when I differentiate f partially with respect to z, I will be getting first term 0 and second term 2y, third term 2x plus lambda into xy equal to 0. So I will be writing like this. My aim is to eliminate lambda. So I am going to take lambda to the other side. So y plus 2 is z equal to minus lambda y z. Similarly, x plus 2 is z equal to minus lambda x z. 2y plus 2x is equal to minus lambda x y. My aim is to eliminate lambda. So either I can eliminate lambda or minus lambda, both are same. So I am rewriting the equation like this. So now from this equation, we can see all my right hand side is minus lambda. Therefore, I can equate my left hand sides and I will get this equation. Now, we are going for step 3. We have to solve the equation. Now, I have to solve the equations. So, now I take first and second term. Second and third term, if I solve, I will try to get the relation from which I can find x, y, z. It is not necessary that always you take first, second, second, third. You can take in any order. So, I am taking the first and second terms of the equation. Now, I can cancel this z and z and I can cross multiply this x and y. I will be getting x into y plus 2z is equal to y into x plus 2z. So, simplifying this, we will be getting xy plus 2xz is equal to xy plus 2yz. So, I can cancel xy, xy. I will be getting 2xz equal to 2yz. Now, I can cancel 2, 2. I can cancel z, z. Finally, I will get x equal to y. You can see the type version. Now, I am taking the second and third terms. Similarly, I can try to cancel x, x and cross multiply y and z to the other sides. I will be getting y into x plus 2z is equal to z into 2y plus 2x. Now, simplifying this, we will be getting xy plus 2yz equal to 2yz plus 2xz. Now, I can cancel this 2yz and 2yz will be getting xy equal to 2xz. Now, xx will get cancelled. Finally, I get the relation y equal to 2z. From this, I get the relation x equal to y equal to 2z. We are going for step 4. Step 4 is substituting this relation in equation 2 because equation 2 is the next parameter. f lambda equal to 0. That is my equation 2. Now, we know the equation is x, y, z equal to 32. Substituting x equal to y equal to 2z in this equation. So, I can replace x by 2z, y by 2z and z is equal to 32. So, 4z cube is equal to 32, z cube is equal to 8 and I found z is equal to 2. When you found z equal to 2, substituting here will be getting x equal to 4 and y equal to 4. Therefore, the dimensions of the rectangular box is going to be 4, 4, 2. We are almost at the end of the problem. Substitute this value in the function that is my surface area of an open rectangular box that is f given in the question. Now, substituting these values, we can find the minimum material which is required to construct a rectangular box open at the top whose volume is 32. Simplifying this, we will be getting 48. So, the total surface area is going to be 48. Hope you understand. If you like this video, click a like button, share to your friends, post your comments in the chat box. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.